What's up guys, Jake here. For those who don't know me, I'm a nuclear and missile operations officer in the United States Air Force. And as a requirement for my job, I keep very irregular sleep hours and I'm constantly deployed to the missile fields where I'm sleeping in unfamiliar locations. The last couple years for my job, uh, I've been getting very erratic and inconsistent sleep. And this honestly has been affecting my physical and mental health a little bit. So I wanted to get a sleep study conducted to diagnose potentially what's going on. So in this video, for you, I want to go over my experience and offer some tips and advice in the event that you have a sleep study coming up soon. So here's a picture of me with all the sensors that they placed on my body. Let's just go over them all so you know exactly what they're testing you for. There are sensors on my chin to test for if I grind my teeth or not. Sensors next to my eyes to detect eye movements. This is when they know if you're experiencing REM sleep and they know what stage of the sleep cycle you're currently in. There's sensors glued all around my head to detect brainwave patterns, uh, sensors up my nose uh, to measure my breathing and my air temperature. The, I asked why would they want my temperature, and I guess if you're not fully inhaling, the air from the room is not getting into your lungs, it's not warming up, so when you exhale it, they know that it wasn't fully in your lungs or not. There are sensors on my legs to detect if I have uh, restless leg syndrome or I, I kick in my sleep. Sensors on my chest and stomach, they're kind of like these, uh, these bands that go all the way around, once again to measure uh, my breathing. Sensors on my throat, there's one uh, to detect if I'm snoring. A sensor on my side, I think this is called an EKG, to detect my heartbeat and then a sensor with a, a red light on it on my finger in order to measure the blood oxygen levels uh, in my blood system. And combined, all of these sensors together form a polysomnogram, if I'm pronouncing that right. If you Google it, I guess there's over 80 different conditions uh, that can be diagnosed with some kind of sleep disorder. Uh, the one that I'm confident I have is obstructive sleep apnea. I snore very loud in my sleep. I constantly wake up. I'm pretty confident that at certain intervals, I just stop breathing. I then uh, awaken gasping for air and then I fall back asleep. In general, I'm, I'm usually always tired. Uh, maybe you notice I have bags under my eyes uh, and it's progressively gotten worse as I, I do my job over time. So let me give you the timeline, exactly what happened for this sleep study. The letter I got in the mail said to arrive at 8 p.m. However, on the phone, they told me 8.30. So I was kind of confused when I should show up. So I just showed up at 8. However, they weren't ready for me until 8.30. So I sat in the lobby and just watched Netflix on my phone. So definitely verify with them what time you should get there because there's no reason to arrive any earlier. At 8.35, the nurse uh, came and got us. It was me and one other person getting a sleep study done that night. And this is kind of what the room looked like. Uh, they try and make it look just kind of like a hotel room. So it was very comfortable, very familiar, not awkward at all. It's not like a hospital bed with like uh, those, those uh, cage fences on the sides. But in the room, there will be an intercom system and cameras. So. Some sleep rooms, there's a, but there's a button you can push if you need help or you need the sleep technician to come in and insist you. My room just had an intercom and I was told to just uh, yell her name or, or yell for assistance anytime like uh, they needed to come in. For the cameras, I'm assuming it's a night vision camera and they're recording you all night so that they can potentially sync that up with results to see what you do. Uh, so there is kind of like this uh, circular uh, camera with like red dots all around it, kind of like a security camera outside of a building. At 8.45, I signed all the required paperwork and I changed into my pajamas. I recommend long pajama bottoms. And in the event that you're not familiar or comfortable with sleeping in a full t-shirt, I, for example, wore an A-shirt. Uh, you, know, you don't want to be shirtless, uh, but I personally 
find it uncomfortable sleeping in a full t-shirt, so I just wore an A-shirt. Additionally, what else should you pack for this trip? I recommend, I highly recommend bringing your own personal pillow so that you're comfortable, uh, you know, sleeping, sleeping in an unfamiliar bed. You might want to bring a bottled water and a snack, maybe for the morning uh, when you wake up, you're going to be groggy and potentially hungry. You can bring a change of clothes if you don't want to just wear the same clothes that you came in. You can bring uh, toiletries and shower sandals. There is the option to shower there in the morning. You're fully capable of it. However, I asked the technician, how often do people shower after a sleep study? And it's not that common. Where this would make sense is that if you're going straight from a sleep study to your job in the morning, some people have to do this. They do put kind of like adhesive, you know, on your scalp and on your skin. So if you are going straight to some kind of appointment or your job, then yeah, you might have to shower in the morning. You also might want to bring a phone charger in the event that your phone gets low and don't forget to bring your insurance card. They're, they're, they are going to want to check that one last time before you, uh, before you uh, conduct the study. At 8.50, they brought in a portable DVD player and I watched a 10 minute instructional video about the whole sleep study. They then made themselves available to answer any questions I might have. At 9.10, they started hooking me up and from all those wires, you can imagine, kind of takes a little while, but the adhesives, the stickies, uh, you don't really feel them or, or notice them after time. I'll, I'll tell you what kind of was tripping me up. The sensor for me that potentially was the most uncomfortable was this sensor on my Adam's apple. I just feel like my neck in general is pretty sensitive and when she placed this right on top of my Adam's apple, I, I actually asked if she could maybe adjust it and move it, move it down. If any of these sensors are placed on you and you, you'd like it just slightly moved, see if there's some flexibility. The technician is happy to take it off and, and, and reapply it. The next uh, sensor that's going to be a little awkward is the one on your finger because the, the cord wrapping around your arm is going to be thicker than all of the rest of them because they've got to get this diode, I guess, this projected red light that uh, measures the oxygen in your blood system. That was kind of uh, unusual for me to have this cord around my arm as I was trying to sleep on my side. I was able to adjust it. It wasn't taped to me. It was like a rubber clamp. And she told me that at any point in the night, if I wanted to, I could pick it up and I could move it to a different finger. So sometimes it was on my right hand. Sometimes it was on my left hand. The other sensors that I want to warn you about are the ones up the nose. And there are two of them, one to measure your breathing, one to measure temperature. And something I recommend to you guys is maybe to trim your nose hairs uh, just to cut down on that uh, sensory <laughs> sensitivity. I don't know. Like, I eventually did get used to having these in my nose. They're not very deep, but it's still, you know, a little sensitive, a little ticklish up there. So uh, having those in my nose felt a little strange, uh, but I, through the night, I, I did get used to it. The hookup process took about 30 minutes and by 9.50 the technician wanted to get me into bed. I watched some other YouTube videos saying that they were given time to like watch TV shows or read a book or something, you know, and they didn't have to go to bed until maybe 11 or 12, but I got the impression the technician wanted me to uh, get this thing going. So I, I got into bed and uh, it, it was difficult the first two hours. They're going to have you do uh, the baseline tests. They're going to have you move your eyes left and right, up and down, breathe in through your nose, breathe in through your mouth, wiggle your legs. So you're going to do all the things to make sure that all the equipment is monitoring correctly and kind of give the, uh, the system a baseline to compare results. And they, I initially started out on my side, uh, and I guess the, the sensors around my body cavity weren't, weren't registering well. So the nurse did have to come in a couple times to swap those out and, and, and change them. Nothing really fell off me and I didn't have as, as many complications as I think other people have. But at one point, the technician did tell me to lay on my back and try and lay on my back and I, I couldn't do it. Uh, I, I, I laid there for maybe 
15 minutes, but I felt more pressure on my neck from all the, the wires and like the, that plastic tube. When I'm on my side, I wasn't really feeling the pressure on my neck as much, but once I was on my back, I just don't like having things rubbing up against my Adam's apple. So after 15 minutes, I told her, I, I just was being honest. I'm like, I'm never gonna fall asleep laying on my back. Can I go back to my side? And she let me go back to my side. I don't really remember anything after that. I didn't have to wake up and use the bathroom, thankfully. Uh, she didn't have to come in to fix any of the, fix any of the wires. And at around 5.20, uh, she woke me up. And the test, I think, was supposed to go until 6 a.m., so I'm a little, a little curious uh, why I was woken up at 5.20, but I think the reason why is she knew I was awake. Uh, the technician can see where in your sleep cycle you are, and at 5.20 I must have been in that uh, hazy period between like step four and, and, and restarting the cycle, so she knew I was awake. She knew I was in the point where she could uh, speak over the intercom, I would hear it, I would instantly get up, so at 5.20 I was woken up. Now for this sleep study, I actually was eligible for treatment. We talked about this prior to me going to bed, but I asked her, if I do have obstructive sleep apnea, will I get CPAP treatment tonight? And she said, yes, it is possible. However, there's a threshold you have to meet with the technician. If your sleeping and snoring uh, and breathing is so bad, they, and you hit a certain number of disturbances by 2 a.m., then the technician at 2 a.m. will come in and, and, and explain the CPAP machine, hook you up to it and start treating you to find out like what airflow pressure from the, sh the, from the machine is best for you. However, since I wasn't woken up at 2 a.m., obviously I didn't have enough uh, disturbances. Doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with me, it just means I didn't meet the criteria to be treated that night by the technician. I, I asked her, like, you know, what did you think of my results? Was I snoring? And she was not allowed to tell me anything. Obviously, people wake up and they want to know how did it go, but she said, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not qualified to share any results with you. Uh, you'll get your results from your primary caregiver in two weeks. What general tips and advice do I have for you if you're having a sleep study done? And the first one is to turn on a fan for background noise. This, the other sleep study that was being conducted was on the other, other side of the wall of me and I could hear that individual anytime they called out for the technician or the technician was speaking over the intercom to, to them in the bed. So there was a fan in the room. I waited 20 minutes before requesting the technician to come in and turn it on. I definitely felt better or was able to rest more peacefully not hearing all those uh, background noises in the distance of this, uh, this hospital. Next tip I would recommend is to drink a lot of water before noon. I mean, just, just chug a bunch of it in the morning so you can uh, stay hydrated and get it out of your system before going into the sleep study. You don't want to have to, uh, you know, call in the technician to basically unplug you from the wall so that you can go to the bathroom, then you gotta get back in bed, the technician will plug you back in. I actually didn't need to uh, have the technician come in once the whole night. So I'm pretty proud of myself that I made it seven hours without, uh, without having to use the restroom. But I, I took precautions because I also ate a very early dinner at around 4 p.m. I normally go to sleep at around 11 or 12, so the fact that the technician was telling me to get into bed at 10, I'm glad that I just ate dinner earlier, so I wasn't, you know, still digesting food. These are the rules, obviously, but don't take naps and don't drink caffeine that day. I definitely showed up feeling a little bit tired and, and, and wanting to go to bed, so that definitely helped me out with all of these wires uh, hooked up to my, my face and body. Next one is to maybe go for like a one hour walk outside or go to the gym and just walk on the treadmill for an hour. You don't wanna get strenuous activity and potentially injure yourself uh, or, or strain something, but you do wanna you know, use your body and, and make sure that your, your body is ready to get good rest that night. So how did I sleep overall? And I guess I got through it. Once again, there was the initial period where uh, the technician came in a couple times to fix the, the sensors around my chest and waist. They then wanted me to attempt to sleep on my back. I couldn't do that. 
But as soon as I rolled over on my side, I, I feel like I got a solid five hours and I, that's hopefully all they need in order to diagnose. Now, did I wake up during the night? I think I did, but I always wake up during the night. That's, that's why I've been having problems. So I'll get the results in two weeks. We'll see where it is. If I do get prescribed a CPAP, I might make a video talking about that just because I don't know. I, I'm if if there's something that can help me sleep better at night, I definitely want to uh, pursue that. Okay, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up for the algorithm. If you have any comments or questions about sleep studies, let me know down below. I'll help you if I can. Till the next video, take care.